So these breathers, I'd be inclined to check these breathers first to make sure that they're clear and clean because you can do this on the pot without taking the entire valve out of the system because the breather may be the reason why that piston's not lifting appropriately to, to lift the piston off the, off the, off the uh, urethane seat to let the grit go through. So what we do is we just check them to see if they're clear and clean. This one's really good so I can actually blow through it. If you wish to, give it a wash, blow it back out, put it back in. Do you need thread tape or anything? No, it's brass and it's going into cast aluminium. So it'll find its own seat and the thread will settle down in there anyway. So it'll, it'll go through, it'll tighten up to the stage where it's nipped. There's no need to over tighten because you can actually stretch the brass and you won't get it back out. So look, and that's plenty. So do the same with the other one, repeat the step on the other side because there's two breathers there, because there's two exhaust ports. So there's quite a bit of air has to escape from these little fellows. So again, you see, I check to see if it's clean and clear, see if I can blow through it, give it a blow out, make sure the thread's clean, pop him back in. Now I would do this before disassembling this entire valve because that could be the reason you're stopping. So what I'm showing you now is the fundamental process of elimination primarily to establish why the valve's not lifting off the seat. So remember what I said, the air line that goes down from the auto valve to this valve, I've taken it off, opened the dead man, the air's coming to this, so something is wrong with this. And the biggest problem with these is moisture. They don't like moisture. So if you're getting excessive moisture, you need to install an air prep to diminish the amount of fluid that runs through this. Now as far as pulling this apart is concerned, if you think to yourself, I've never pulled one apart before, what do I do? You can ring the guys on the help desk at Blast One and they'll run you through this. They'll email you through a diagram of how to repair this and pull it to pieces. So where do I start? I've got base bolts and I've got a big, I've got a big nut here, a plug. So in essence, remember, this goes around this way. The conical section of the pot comes down here and feeds the grid into this hole. So this one here, before I even pull this valve off, I can also undo this plug and see if the grit flows through. Because if you've got no grit coming through the pusher line, you can always use this in the inspection port. So what you'll need to do is undo this particular plug and see if there is grit in the chamber. So another check you're doing, it's a subsequent check as you go through checking items to ensure they work all in line with your process of elimination. So if you do have substantial grit coming out of that plug, you will need a sizable shifter for that, to undo that. And what, it, what you've got to be careful of is that you don't over tighten it, because you can actually split this aluminium housing. So a little bit of thread tape on it is a good thing. And also too, you can check the thread while you're at it to make sure that it's clear and clean. So that's the plug I would take off while this is on the, on the pot. Now if the grit starts flowing out and you think, oh, I can't get that plug back in, what do I do, what do I do? Lay the pot backwards so the grit stops flowing out and enables you to get the plug back on. Just clear the grit out of the thread, put the plug back on. So let's reinstate that for now. So what I don't do is just do it up hand tight and leave it primarily because I can put that back in the pot and I've forgotten about tightening that up. Now that could shoot out at a rate of knots and hurt somebody. So it pays to reinstate it. It's not going to impede the progress in relation to pulling the valve to pieces. But what it is going to do is it's eliminating one item that I may forget in reassembly that could actually cause somebody some harm, particularly me. So, now that plug's put back in, where do I start in disassembling this? Because we've established that they are clean and clear and clean, those two little plugs. So the best way to do this is to, while that big knob is wound backwards, so it's wound counterclockwise, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, 
So I take the tension all the way off it. Now why I've done that is because underneath here is a spring and this spring is putting tension onto the piston. So when I go to undo these four bolts here, if I leave that knob wound all the way in, I'm compressing the spring and putting excessive tension back on this housing that I'm trying to remove. So I've done that, relief, released, relief the, uh, the tension on the spring. Would I start there or here? Well, let's start at the base and it exposes the piston, the sleeve, the seats, and the seals up in here which is up in this stem here, and then the piston. So we'll go from the bottom up, which is the easiest way to do this. Now these will be 9 16 They are imperial metric, uh, they are imperial, not metric on these. So just hold it nice and still. Now if they're a bit tight, to make life a bit easier, if, you're, if you've got a vice available, by all means, pinch it and hold it safely so that you can undo these items but what I am simulating here is a broad cross section of, yes, look, I have a vice available, but a lot of you guys know that when you're on site, you don't have a vice. So you can actually put your foot on this and hold it still, or with a pair of stilsons, grab the base of the body itself, hold the stilsons with your foot and undo it. So you notice I'm using a ring spanner you can use sockets, or you can, if you've only got ring, open enders on site, you can use an open ender. Now, the reason I prefer ring spanners or sockets, there's less chance of wind, uh, stripping the, the head of the hex of the bolt and make it very difficult to reassemble, and more importantly, make it even more impossible when you go to dis dismantle the unit. Now, what I'm taking off here is the hardened pipe, or the base. And you can see here that it's got an impregnation of the seat itself. So this seat, as you can see, is look, it's quite tight. How do I get it out of there? Well, I don't want to damage it. And because I don't want to damage it, I only want to pop it out of there. So cover the end of the screwdriver with a rag and pick up the lip of the, of the neoprene and just pop it out. And because that's what they look like, that means that the piston in that taper is going to sit into that taper. So just to pop that out, I'll just, again, cover my screwdriver and put that in the side of it and pop it out, like so. 